which is near as I can tell, it's uh, a King James version. No, we don't have horror no, no, no. Yeah, Mason Bible. Totally demonic. Well, they, for Masonic use. So they've got alternate definitions of words. But what really shocked me the first time I picked this up, Sun God, Ra, Amen, the Father of God, the Creator, published in the Freemason Bible, which is near as I can tell, it's a, a King James version. People like Jordan Maxwell and, and the woman who made Ring of Power, they try and mix up language and they say, oh, well, when you say Amen at the end of a prayer, you're really, this is who you're saying your prayer to, Amen Ra. Well, that's a lie. Uh, no, Amen is Hebrew for so be it or it is so. So be it, or something I think like it's that. so be it. It's Hebrew. Talk to anyone who's Hebrew and say, "How do you? What does Amen mean?" And they'll say, "Well, it is so." And that's the truth. That's why we say Amen at the end of a prayer because it's Hebrew for "so be it." Or, I think it's so be it. But these liars are trying to convince everyone that you're praying to Amen Ra, the Sun God. That's the mystery religions. They mix in all these lies and pagan sun worshipping trying to corrupt and pervert everything. So we got a Christian halo comes from these. Yeah, I know, yeah. The halo never appeared. Uh, never in the Bible says that anything about anything like that. Until uh, the fourth set, yeah. And so we've got all this Babylonian crap mixed in here. And these are, there's an obelisk. Well, that's, uh, that was Osiris's penis. That's, that's, uh, worship for fertility. worship, yeah. Yeah, and the Washington Monument, it's an Egyptian obelisk. There's one at the middle of St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. There's another one in the middle of the city of London. These Egyptian obelisks, what are they doing all over the planet? The Oval Office is actually a female temple. Yeah. And the steeple is actually going, penetrating it. If you look well, yeah, at it from a certain angle, it's a steeple penetrating the uh, Oval Office, which is a female. You just need to watch Christian J. Pinto. are about the history and blah, blah, blah. But then you flip to the back, and there's all this Egyptian, Babylonian. An account of the building of the walls and temples of Babylon. I think it's interesting that Saddam Hussein actually believed that he was Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was a reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. There's even a statue in Iraq that says that. See how he's bigger than all the others? It's because he's the god, and they're the people who are worshipping the giant Nephilim god from back in the day. These are given to initiated when they're when they're reborn. Okay. Now this belonged to Brother Edward Black, it was initiated November 10th, 36. He passed and then was raised. And when you're raised, you're reborn. That was uh, 1936. This guy was initiated. And then these are all the lodge numbers of visiting brethren and friends. Lodge number 231, 669, and, and the names. The names of the lodges and the numbers of the lodges. And this is the guy who raised up, fellow candidates. I guess that's witnesses, I don't know. But these are supposed to be returned upon death. And I guess what happened was that this guy passed away and whoever was handling his estate just dropped off a bunch of books at the used bookstore, not realizing that this was contained within and the significance of it. So I'm not supposed to have this, but the person at the used bookstore knew it would be appreciated and set it aside.
And it's got the compass and square right on the front. It's blue. It's got a blue cover and it's got the compass and square right on the front. It says Freemasonic Bible. That's what it says. This is copyrighted 1928. And it opens up with the Holy Bible and Freemasonry and explains. They try and justify or, or convince the unsuspecting Mason that uh, see the first I think the first degree uh, when you're doing the the ceremony you're asked uh, what do you seek light and then the second degree it's what do you seek more light and then the third degree what do you seek uh, further light and they rise up through the the degrees now Stan Monteith does a great uh, presentation called the hidden secret and, and the hidden secret, which is revealed at the 33rd degree, is that the light you've been seeking all of this time is the light of the light bearer, Lucifer. The Ralph Rep Epperson presentation, the second witness to the apocalypse, goes into all this in great detail with the quotes directly from Manly P. Paul and Albert Pike. It explains how uh, all Masons swear an oath to destroy Christianity at all costs, regardless of whether you have to murder, lie, steal, doesn't matter. Everything is justified. Here we go into page seven, and they're explaining how the Bible became a great light. See, they use this term, light, light, great light, all the way through, and, and the hidden secret, which is not revealed until the 33rd degree is what the light really is. Yeah. So we get into the, the story of the English Bible, and there's all this stuff prefacing the actual beginning of the Bible. King Solomon's temple. It's all very startling. I'm trying to be careful because it's a Masonic Bible. Okay. okay, the construction of the temple, they're getting into Solomon's temple. Masonic ritual. Okay, we're on page 31. And then we get page 33. The Holy Bible starts off page 33. Could that be a coincidence? What's the significance of 33? The Holy Bible starts on the 33rd page of the Masonic Bible. Pretty demonic, isn't it? And I haven't gone through it in great detail. It appears to be a King James Version. But then you flip to the back and there's all this Egyptian Babylonian symbols and how it relates to the content of the book. And seals, the, uh, hieroglyphs that are taken off seals. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, this Babylonian shit has nothing to do with this book? This is like, ah. I put it down and went, oh, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. 